Cougar Single Six, the Nut Fancy Review. To shoot, they have impressive firepower. They fill vital self-protection roles in our systems. But for a moment here in the Nut and Fancy Project, let's put aside awesome. the AR-15s, the AKs, the equally impressive semi-automatic handguns that I've discussed at length for the past three years in TNP. Slow it down a bit, change gears, and we will consider the achievement that nice is job. the outstanding Ruger single six. Now you young whippersnappers out there may not be familiar with the Ruger single six and if you are perhaps you are not a fan. I don't know maybe that's because it is not part of the loadout in modern warfare or other shoot 'em up video games. The Ruger single six probably not on the drop down menu and maybe younger generations are not in love with it. In this nut and fancy tabletop review of the awesome little Ruger Single Six, I'll do my best to impart information to you the way I always do, trying to be as thorough as I can, as fun as I can, because this is a fun handgun, and impart to you the reasons why I love the Ruger Single Six. And it goes back a long ways. Uh, namely back to the 1970s. You guys remember my Ruger 1022 series of videos, the Everyman's Rifle? I think in that series I told you that when I was a young man I used to strap my 1022 over my shoulder, get on my bike, and ride up into them there hills to do some rarebit shooting. Yep, plinking, sniping the jackrabbits. Good times with the Ruger 1022. On one of those expeditions, this gun came with me. It was on loan from a good friend. Creed, where are you, buddy? What a stud he was. Introduced me to a lot of shooting Creed did, and he had a Ruger single six. Loan it to me, and uh, on an afternoon, I went up there with both cylinders, 22 long rifle, 22 magnum, and both caliber ammo loadouts, and I just had a great time with a Ruger single six. I was probably... If I were to think about it, 13 years old at that time, and I fell in love with the gun then. Maybe, and I'm going to jump right into philosophy of use because that's what we're discussing here. Maybe it it's because it harkens back to this, guys. Check out the sounds on the Ruger Single Six. I'm just talking about mechanical sounds. Okay, and this will serve as a interesting safety check as well. We open up the loading gate, rotate the cylinder, check it. Oh, daddy like precision steel. Okay. Moreover, the cocking of the Ruger single six. Listen to that. Now for my generation, that also has an additional meaning, and maybe it goes back to the movie, I don't know, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, The Magnificent Seven, any number of the spaghetti westerns of Clint Eastwood, John Wayne's movies. Dude, when you heard that sound, somebody's getting ready to die in the western. Yep. For my generation, and actually generations previous to mine, older guys, I mean, we uh, identified with the Colt Single Action Army, and that's what this gun is modeled after, the Single Six. To almost perfect form, if you were to ask me. 
And so it taps into that love, that genre that we have. It taps into the traditional westerns. The style of shooting, yes, it's related to the movies, it's related to traditions. I think it's funny that the nothing fancy name <laughs> is so synonymous with tactical things. Yes, I reviewed a lot of tactical things. I do have a love for those items. But it doesn't push guns like the Ruger Single 6 out of my gun safe. It just doesn't. There is a love for traditional firearms. You will see a lot more in the Nut and Fancy Project when I can find time and give them a quality review like I'm going to attempt to do with the Ruger Single 6. And by the way, this gun's been in the project since 2009? Yes, for two years the Ruger Single 6 has been in TMP going through its paces. Now it isn't like a solid two years of shooting but you know, through that two years, occasional outings, there was a Ruger Single 6 going through its paces in my hands, testing accuracy, and once again, falling in love with the gun. Philosophy of use, first and foremost, is a recreational firearm. I think that's what most of us own the Single 6 for, hearkening back again to the Westerns, and we just love the battery of arms, the old-fashionedness of the Ruger Single 6, the quality levels, that it is a machined steel gun. Yeah, we like that. And there's, I know, some other single action 22 caliber revolvers out there, which I think establish good, uh, perhaps acceptable quality levels. But for me, the Ruger Single 6 is where it's at. It's so established. Constantly selling since 1953, the Single 6. Amazing. First POU, of course, is recreational. Maybe you're a target shooter and you love what I think is good, if not excellent, accuracy afforded by the single six. And that's your thing. Maybe you like one-handed bullseye style of shooting. Uh, maybe pseudo, I don't know, cowboy action shooting. That's extremely affordable since it's in 22 long rifle. Maybe 22 magnum, depending which cylinder you're going to throw in it. By the way, this is model 10621. It is a super single six adjustable sight version coming with the 22 Magnum cylinder. I'll discuss here in a little bit. So perhaps cowboy action style of shooting, recreational shooting. How about this philosophy of use? A critter getter. Yep. I think that's one of the high points of the single six because it does, I might as well break it out, break it out now, come with that 22 Magnum cylinder. Dude, that is such a huge advantage that on the fly and relatively easily you can swap in a 22 max cylinder and you just basically doubled the hitting power of this gun. You know, if you have some critters out there that are a little bit sly, they're out of range of what would, uh, I don't know, constitute 22 long rifle range, slamming this bad boy. And then we'll see who's laughing. Yep, especially if you use, uh, and I might as well discuss different models of the single six. You use that model, uh, what is it, the Hunter model. I'll roll a picture in. 0662 7.5 inch barrel laminated grips, a whopping 45 ounces. You can put Ruger rings on there, tip off rings, put a scope on there. Now you've got yourself a critter getter in 22 Magnum. That is a single six. And dudes, I'm telling you, it is a getter. I know because I've used it that way myself. I have relatives out in Eastern Oregon. They had a Ruger single six, and we killed lots of rabbits with that there gun. Don't tell Verilinus. Shh, it's our secret. 22 Magnum gives this gun a lot more capabilities. And also collecting. There's different variations and have been in the Ruger Single 6 line since, of course, 1953. And as a quick summary, the original models were from 1953 to 1962, superseded by what are referred to as the old models, 63 to 72. And then the new models came out in 73. 1973, and they introduced the transfer bar mechanism to the single six, which is basically that bar right there that rises up when the trigger is pulled and allows you to fire the gun and introduces a much higher level of safety. Previous to that, the firing pin could actually contact the cartridge in the cylinder, and to carry it safely, you had to do so on an empty chamber. But the new models, which I think are pretty much uh, everywhere now, 
I mean, 1973, dude, it's a long time ago, are much safer with that transfer bar. Other versions of the single six, and I did say I'd cover this, there is a 17 HMR version, model 106, 6 one, blue six and a half inch barrel, uh, I believe, and that thing shoots like a laser beam, attributed, of course, to the extremely accurate 17 HMR outstanding. Then you got the 10623 4.62 inch blued version rocking around 32 ounces. And by the way, I measure mine not at the factory designated 33, but this is 34.2 ounces, model 10621. Uh, Make sure I'm getting that right. Five and a half inch barrel. And by the way, that's my favorite barrel length on the Ruger single six. Highly recommended by me, nothing fancy. Apparently, it is already very popular. I went to our friend's gallery of guns and looked, and this version is totally sold out, at least this month. And boy, I'll tell you, they got some cool versions out there. Don't forget Gallery of Guns. It's still a very cool way to get your, I don't know, in this case, Ruger Single Six. They have a tallow version, Ruger Super Single Six, six and a half inch barrel, stainless steel. It has embedded in its frame a 60th anniversary gold medallion right there. Beautiful gun. And I just price checked that I'm kind of jumping down to value in the T value in the TPs. $460. You talk about tempting. Deliver to your FFL, uh, <clears throat> my FFL. What an addition to your collection that would be. There's other versions as well. I might mention some more when we get down to value. That's philosophies of use. As I see them for the Ruger Single Six, I may have missed a couple. Size and weight. I've kind of been talking about it here. Five and a half inch barrel version is my favorite. In 1957, with the Ruger Single Six, they offered three versions, four and five eighths inches, six and a half inches, an incredible nine, nine and a half inch barreled Single Six. That's like the revolver that Joker had in that Batman movie. Wow, that is a, a long barrel. Uh, I would not prefer that, except maybe for collectible status. Maybe that would be a reason to have it. It's a heavy gun. I mean, we're talking 35 ounces more or less for this version, more if you go with heavier barrels. But again, who cares? That's not the philosophy of use for this gun. This is not, in my opinion, a self-defense firearm. It's not one that I'd be carrying around along with a bunch of other weight. It's not a backpacking gun to me. Maybe you should look into the Ruger Bearcat for that, which is a very small single action gun, much lighter, around 25 ounces, I think, 24, 25 ounces of Ruger Bearcat would serve great. Um, but for guys with larger sized hands like me, I don't know, may not fit so well jumping down to ergonomics. In fact, a lot of guys will not have a full purchase on the grips of the Ruger Single Six, much less so with the Bearcat. But back to weight and size, um, no, it's not something I'm going to be carrying around a ton. It's going to be something, maybe I'll go traipse around the desert in a traditional leather holster, you know, looking for an area that is uh, <clears throat> infested with jackrabbits or something. You know, sometimes we can do the environment a favor. By the way, when I'm on that subject, if your area does not have a lot of pests like that, please don't go hunt them. Give them a chance to regenerate. I mean, the areas where I frequent used to have thousands of jackrabbits and now I don't see any out there. They are pretty much decimated that guy by guys who took it to the limit. Too much. And I know seven year cycle on rabbits, I still haven't seen them. How about in 15 years? Here and there occasionally but not many. So let's be smart with the environment. Little side note from Net and Fancy. Okay, firepower. Dude, I even hate to say this with this gun. It's ridiculous. It's six rounds. Okay, it's Firepower does not apply to the Ruger Single Six, I know. And there are other 22 revolvers out there that hold more. I don't know, uh, the awesome Smith & Wesson 317 and 617, which I absolutely love. They hold more. But remember, we changed gears, dude. We slowed it down. We're not talking fast shooting. We're not talking about tactical when we discuss Ruger Single Six. We are doing a different style of shooting. It's more recreational, it's slower, it's old-fashioned. We take perhaps more of an interest in making every round count, which is something we should all teach our children when introducing them to, introducing them to firearms. Witness my series on Children of the Gun, teaching your children real firearm safety. Check that. 
The Ruger Single 6 would work perfectly for that. Okay, and firepower, it's not a fast loading gun either. The cylinder does not swing out for reload. And for you young whippersnappers, the way you reload it is you open the loading gate right here, which by the way has changed in the 50s. You used to have a much flatter loading gate, now it's more contoured, has been for a long time, easier to load. And in the new model, the loading by the way, you don't have to do anything with a hammer. In those older versions of the Ruger Single 6s, there were actually four positions of the hammer and they interfaced with how you loaded the gun. For summary, in the old model secure, uh, security single six, you would have fully down, you would have safe, which was like a half cock, you would have the loading notch, then you would have full cock. All done away with, thankfully, in the new model, all you do is open up the loading gate and it deactivates everything and you can rotate the cylinder freely. So you shoot your six rounds, we're still talking about firepower, and here's your ejector rod. Yeah, buddy, that's old fashioned, huh? Maybe I'll roll in some video right now of me reloading the single six. You can get good at it. Okay, it can go relatively fast, and just like anything, it is a skill set. However, it is not a swing out cylinder, and it's not a modern revolver. It is harkening back to the Colt SAA, single action army. Okay. Make every round count, baby. Six rounds. That's all she got. Accuracy. Dudes, the Ruger Single 6, pretty accurate. Let me say, uh, along with a good friend who also owns a Single 6, done, has done a lot of shooting, You know, he'll tell me that he's getting about 4-inch groups at 25 yards with bulk ammo. About 2-inch groups at 15 yards bulk ammo. I think that's reasonable, and I, I, I think that's standing offhand. I don't know if that's rested. It might be rested. I will tell you, if you can do four inches standing, you're doing pretty good. Really good with any handgun, single six included. Uh, some very reputable gun riders report they get about one and a half inches, which I think is extremely impressive, at 25 yards from the bench with a number of different 22 loads. Okay, I think overall... If you are really, really good, and from my own shooting, you could probably expect to see about 2 inches at 25 yards overall with good ammo. Let me roll in a couple targets. First up, I went to Impact Guns like forever ago. This was probably 2009. I told you this gun's been in inventory forever. This was Sterling and I. Okay, you remember Sterling from Impact Guns? You uh, longtime TM Peers. So he and I... Went out, uh, actually it was in the indoor range shooting the Ruger single six, this one right here. And actually I went out with a mission that particular day and the mission was to find out if there was an accuracy difference between the 22 long rifle and the 22 Magnum. Keep in mind the 22 Magnum bullet diameter is .224 inches and the Ruger 22, uh, not the Ruger, but the 22 long rifle diameter is .222, so 222. The barrel, therefore, is sized for the 22 Magnum, slightly larger than it needs to be for the 22 Long Rifle. The question I had and that we set out to find was, is there a marked difference in accuracy when you're shooting 22 Long Rifle? Since that bullet is not exactly sized for the barrel. Okay, there's a 22 Magnum cylinder. So ideally in a convertible super single six like this one, adjustable sights, when you're shooting 22 magnums, that's going to be your most accurate load coming out of the gun. Unless you do something funky with it, there's some sizers out there for 22 long rifle ammo that you can size and enlarge the bullet slightly to fit the barrel better. But in my experience, I don't think you're going to notice. You're not. First up, here, is, this is my range. I'm looking 10 yards is what we're shooting at. Three quarter inches, CCI mini mags. That's a pretty impressive group. There's another one. Three eighths of an inch. Check that from the gun you're looking at. This is me shooting one and one quarter inch. Not terribly impressive, but still not bad. And there's a one inch group. Uh, I'll try to find the footage and roll it in there, perhaps in the upper right. I can forget if we're sitting. I think we were sitting, trying to go for maximum accuracy. Okay, there's a half inch group with CCI mini mags. Okay, so here we are with the 22 long rifle, 22 magnum. 
This is not a scientific test, by the way. 3 8 inch group, 22 mini mags. Mini mag group right there for me, one inch at 10 yards. Not awesome. And then here comes Sterling's group, okay, 10 yards from the bench. Yeah, we were shooting from the bench. 22 mag, 2 inch. There was another target I had. I lost it. You wouldn't believe the amount of targets I'm storing for this. We shot the Colt Python that day, too. That thing rocked. My, I come away from that little shooting test not really seeing a huge difference between 20, 22 Magnum and 22 Long Rifle in the single six. By the way, here's my buddy's target. Check out this group he did. Amazing. This is actual, too. This is from his single six, 22 long rifle, federal 36 grain crap. Left-handed, that's the kind of bullseye shoot I'm talking about. He did this left-handed 25 yards. Okay, there's his point of aim right there, he said. That is impressive. Accuracy overall for the Ruger single six is going to be good to excellent. Uh, I did have to work to connect with it though. It is a different style of shooting, of course, with a Ruger single six. It's not like a semi-automatic. Every gun has its kind of its own battery of arms. You'll have to spend some time with it and get used to the trigger. Jumping down to ergonomics, by the way, the trigger is pretty awesome. Remember, this is safety checked. Okay, let's bring out the old trigger pull scale. Let me put my trigger pull, trigger where it needs to be. Yeah, I'm getting about four and a half. I've done it before and got about four pounds and I think it lightens up with use. It is a 22. It is a revolver, so occasionally you're going to have to remove your cylinder from your Ruger single six. Pretty simple to do. Of course, we again make sure it's not loaded. Open up that loading gate just like the manual recommends, and then we will remove the base pin like so. Depress the little button right there and pull it straight out. Done. And then Bring it out the loading gate side. And by the way, each cylinder is mated to each gun for timing purposes. And you should have the last three digits on your cylinder face. This one might be a little bit dirty. Where's that 22 Magnum? You can see it right there. They engraved the numbers. I don't know if you can see it on there. And if you buy a, root, a used single six, make sure that those last three digits match your gun because they are indeed mated together. Okay, we got the gun apart. We're going to clean the forcing cone, maybe using a lead removing product if you need to. I haven't cleaned this one yet from last shoot session. Maybe a little bit of uh, lubrication down there and then on the cylinder paw, maybe a little bit there. The manual tells us that you really don't have to take the gun down, that you can lubricate it from the exposed areas of the frame right now and that lubrication will seep in to your Ruger single six. Do you need to take it down more from this stage right here? I would say probably not, but again, the manual is excellent. Oh, incidentally, speaking of field strip, it, uh, internal locks are provided, and thankfully they're hidden underneath the grip on the right side, and if you want to actuate it, it tells you how. If you want to expose it, it tells you how to drill out your grip. There's a place marked for that. No, I will never use the internal lock on this single six, like never ever. Instead, I train everybody in my family to be a safe gun handler. How's that? There's a Bisley version, by the way. Discontinue, I think, in 07. Talking about further detail stripping, though. You dig into the manual, and it gets into the nuts and bolts, literally, of how to do it. With some good admonitions, like this one right there. We wish to emphasize that such a detailed dismantling is seldom, if ever, necessary. <laughs> I agree with that. Uh, I would just take it down like this, unless, of course, you dunked it in salt water or something like that. And then, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and detail strip the single six. Putting it back together is a relatively easy procedure. Loading gate open. Cylinder comes back in from this side. And then what we're going to do, according to the manuals, we're going to line up the fluting of the cylinders so they're equally spaced on the top strap. You see that? What that will do is put that locking or the cylinder paw in the notch. This particular single six is a little bit finicky reinstalling the base pin. And so what I do sometimes sometimes open that locking gate and wiggle it just a little bit. There we go. So the base pin reinserts. There's your field strip. 
Uh, some guys recommend cleaning it with a boar snake so you don't have to clean from the muzzle of the single six. I've really never found that to be a problem. Just be careful. By the way, speaking of the cylinders, I have the 22 LR cylinder in. Obviously, that's 22 long rifle. If you put the 22 Magnum cylinder in, just shoot 22 Magnums in it. The cases are different diameters, actually. Thicker cases in the 22 Mag. You can shoot 22 long rifles out of this, and it's bad juju. Don't do it. There's field strip and maintenance. Accessories and versatility of the Ruger. Super single six. They're all over the place, man. All kinds of great holster options. I jumped online, was looking at... Um, a cowboy action place that had some beautiful triple K leather rigs for the single six. Galco makes some. You can go to shopruger.com and they have some dedicated leather rigs for the single six. Perhaps not quite as versatile or western authentic as I would care for. Um, they had like a thumb snap on them and I think I would prefer an old western style rig for the single six. It's going to be quicker on the draw. You know, different grip options for sure. On the single six, you can go to shopruger.com once again. And other locations, of course, maybe our friends at brownells.com would have some as well. Swap out those grips if you want to. It's been around a long time, since the 50s. You bet. All kind of accessories option, accessory options. Value. Uh, I would say smoking. From Gallery of Guns, the Nut and Fancy Project ordered this Ruger single six delivered to my FFL price paid was drum roll four hundred and twenty five dollars that's good value now the uh, other popular single six will be the five and a half inch stainless steel wood gripped single six and that is model number zero six two five I believe that's going to run around five hundred dollars that's a lot of money, of course, for a 22 long rifle. You could actually go the Ruger 2245, other great semi-automatic pistols like the Browning. They're equally as fun, instructive, and in teaching your children how to shoot, but they're not a single six. Okay, they don't have the charisma of the single six. It is a different style of shooting. We slow it down a bit. Oh, by the way, like all handguns. Uh, let me say all handgun makers Ruger occasionally has quality issues of which I have identified here in the project uh, witness SR9 and some other ones it happens to all gun makers and so I think there's been some quality issues on single six in past years so don't sweat it man if you get one that's a lemon send it back I guarantee you Ruger will hook you up they will fix it no they shouldn't have left the factory that way I agree but it happens it happens to SIG Glock, Ruger, kel CZ, Smith & Wesson. I've covered lots of that here in TMP. Don't worry about it. Durability. Oh, I'm still on value because i got to cover this. I talked about that Tallow one. Amazing. By the way, they have a single six as of the filming of this video. John Wayne version in 32 h and Magnum. It's a single six. Limited edition. Has an engraved John Wayne backstrap ebony grips with a medallion. Ballpark, $750. Cool gun. But I will tell you, the charm of the single six for me is that it is chambered in 22 Magnum or 22 Long Rifle, both of which are going to be much more affordable than 32 h and Magnum to shoot. That's why I think people love the single sixes so much. It's because it's such an affordable gun to shoot, fun gun to shoot. Um, the value is going to be excellent. It's going to be a gun that lasts forever. You won't wear it out by shooting it ever neither will your children or probably their children as long as you take care of it like this blued virgin which by the way is my favorite single six i do love the traditional blue and i like the holster wear that results on a traditional blued single six it looks cool to me western the stainless steel one is also beautiful that tala one love it and strangely enough the manual uh in ruger the ruger manual they actually advocate that you put a pay paste wax on it for me metal on the stainless steel one you could do that I guess I say just keep it moisture free and it's going to be more resistant than this version value uh, value is smoking durability and reliability I already said it it's going to last forever as long as you don't let it rust out and yes I have seen single sixes with that were not taken care of and they rusted and it is a sad sad sight to behold
reliability is excellent. As long as you keep that forcing cone like clean. By the way, look at the clearance on that. It's pretty tight. I have a little bit of fouling on mine though. You won't have any issues, uh, and don't abuse it. Like fanning it and uh, spinning the cylinders are no nos. Uh, my buddy says don't cock it really fast either. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that. Uh, I think the gun should be cocked just fine. If you have a problem with it, it develops timing issues. Again, send it back to Ruger. Track record is amazing. 1953, the single six has been in constant sales. Uh, and you don't hear a lot of reliability problems on them. And they retain their value. It is not an AR-15. It is not an AK. It is not a fast shooting Glock, SIG, Smith & Wesson, CZ, XDM, all the other guns that we also love. It is a traditional, precise, western style of handgun. Made from a quintessential American gun maker. That is the Ruger Single Six. Has all kinds of utility in the philosophies philosophies of use I've discussed, but more than that, it has all kinds of second kind of cool. That is an advanced review. Highly recommended. Thank you so much.